Quite recently, we had a look at Lian Lee's insane TL LCD fans, and even if they were really freaking cool, some people might not want or need to have their temperatures inside all the freaking time, you know, because some people are planning their cooling ahead of time. This is the Lian Lee Uni TL120 RGB, the modest TL. Now, I will admit, as of writing the script, I have still no clue what TL stands for, but apparently these two are somehow related. And I'm questioning this cause they don't have that much in common. All I could find are the general, like generational improvements that Lee and Lee made. Like the better corners that can now completely hide the screw, the controller that now got PCIe 6 pin for power, it got the exact same ARGB implementation, and even the negative changes like the new interconnect pieces that are really hard to remove made it into these fans. You can still block multiple fans into a big ass row, just removing the last piece fits horrible this time around, but other than that, these are completely different fans. Just compare the blades. The regular TL might have the same amount of blades, but the 9 on, on there are bent way more aggressive. And even more importantly, these are made of LCP, or at least the impeller is. So if you ask me, these fans look much more like an evolution of Lee and Lee's last generation P28. There we will find differences that are much more interesting, like the 28mm thick TL120 ARGB, for example, can spin up to 2600 rpm whilst pushing up to 90.1 CFM at 3.97mm of H2O at 33dB. So stats-wise, it's like a slightly downscaled version of the P28. But there are also quite a few differences that I found just interesting as a whole, like the see-through middle shaft section, where we still got the fluid dynamic bearing behind it, but we lost the Lian Lee logo, and quite a bit of size. The TL120 central part is now exactly 43 millimeters diagonally, whereas the P28, or the same section on the P28, was 48 millimeters wide. However, what we won in the middle, we kind of lost around, because due to the thicker border of the fans, thanks to the cooling enhancing ARGB, of course, we are now down to 105 millimeters of actual like wingspan compared to the previous 1010. So we really lost what we won. I don't believe that the TL120 was introduced as a direct successor to the P28, but it's going to make for an interesting comparison for the benchmark section nonetheless. But back to the TL series, other than the obvious missing IPS screen and a few changes on the fan itself, both TL fans are pretty much alike. You can get them in white or black, 120 or 140, and in regular or reverse, with the regular 120 being the subject of today's video. They are available in a single or triple pack, and the triple pack includes the usual Lee and Lee controller, mounting hardware, three fans, and some mounting cables. But unlike the LCD version, this one comes with an additional cable for physical separation whilst maintaining the same block of fans. And this handy adapter which forces the fan to spin at whatever it can. Similarly to other TL fans, we can customize the crap out of the ARGB lines and infinity mirror using Lee and Lee's L3 software, but obviously without including anything like screen related. And with all of that said, let's get to the benchmark. Our case benchmarks are done using a simulator type of machine that uses two identical fans to recycle the air within it, whilst we measure the CPU temperature using a passive Nokia P1. Using this approach allows us to eliminate the potential performance of a real CPU cooler whilst not relying or not allowing radiator-optimized static pressure fans to get the air through there by sheer force. Allowing the TL fans to spin at their max speed made the CPU stay at 42.5 degrees C above ambient, which is very interesting because it's identical to the decimal to a P28. Overall, on this list, it landed towards the top, which was especially impressive considering it beat a 3000 RPM quick spinning fan. By slowly lowering the fan speed and taking notes of the temps and noise, we can create these noise to performance lines. On here we can see that the comparison to a P28 is much more interesting than just 
having a similar result. Because at the top speed, whilst performing in the exact same way, the TL fan was slightly better. It, it, in fact, it was just good overall. But as soon as we move that slider and we drop below about 80% of the max speed, the P28 took over and stayed there until the very end of the list. A bit unfortunate for the TL, but one of its last measuring points was slightly louder or harder, depending on how you want to look at it, than other notable comparisons like the A12 or T30. And therefore, the TL line starts falling behind once the speeds go to just slower overall. For our radiator benchmarks, we strap any given fan to a 10 FPI 80 mm thick radiator while we measure the temperature of the water and subtract the ambient air temperature, giving us the temperature of the water above ambient. Spinning at max speed, the TL managed to keep the water at 9.7 degrees C above ambient. Compared to the P28, we can see that once the required static pressure is increased, the P20A takes the lead. Not by a huge chunk, but still. As a whole, the 9.7 degrees achieved by the TL120 are not bad at all. Positioning it at the top half of the graph is actually quite good. Over on the noise to performance chart, we can see that the gap we had on the case scenario became much, much smaller to non-existent. Starting off relatively similar to AP28, it goes down from there and makes the same dip towards a M25 or Fantex as it did before. So on a performance side, it's a very good fan. Both case and radiator performance was impressive, slightly better on case scenarios and definitely not the best of any category, but overall a, a good performer as a whole. Pretty much comparable to a P28 and then a bit better here and a bit less better there. Quality wise, it's still a uni fan and very similar to the LCD version. They feel like a freaking brick, don't bend, it's, it's a uni fan with added LCP which just improves quality overall. But there are still some minor differences to the LCD version that I wanted to mention, like the fact that you can chain up to 10 individual non-LCD TL fans to each other, either, or either in a, a bigger block or by help of the separating cable. And in this case, you can install the connection cable on either side of the fan. So you can basically build the whole block in reverse. And as a last small fact, unlike most Li and Li fans before, both TL fans use the same controller. So you can just mix match them however you want on the same controller, but not to each other. That, that doesn't work at all. Price-wise, it's an MSRP of 33 US dollars or 109 for a three-pack, which is okay, as in all high-end fans cost that much nowadays. Of course, I would prefer them to be less expensive, of course I would, but, but considering the ARGB implementation, which is as beautiful as ever and quality, it's definitely up to a Noxia or Be Quiet or whatever else expensive fan, so it's okay, I guess. But okay, for today, this is going to be it for Li and Li and their new UniFan TL120 fan. And at this point, a huge thank you to them for sending them over. On a side note, we also have a Discord server, so if you want to join, the link is down below. And of course, we still have channel membership, so if you're looking for a good way to sell your soul for an RG poop emoji, that's a pretty good way to go. Additionally, you can rest assured that the income will not only keep the channel afloat, but will also serve to keep maintaining the arrival of Lee and Lee fans, because after what I did to the LCD TL fans, I had to do something similar to the regular TLs. Now, they will never look me in the eye ever again. Anyway, thank you for watching, and if you want to continue, have a look at our take on the LCD reverse spinning version of this fan. It's just hella interesting, and you have a freaking f monitor in the center. Anyway, hope to see you in the next one. Bye-bye.